You know, I think one of the reasons we don't think about this enough is we, we feel like we've heard, I mean, Francis isn't creating whole new ideas. Like um, Steve Angrisano a couple years ago at a national conference said, looking back over his life in ministry, he wished he would have had and given other people more real faith experiences and not near faith experiences. And I thought back to when I was a classroom religion teacher, five days a week, you know, seven hours a day teaching theology to high school girls. And I thought I talked to them way too much about prayer. I should have prayed with them. You know, that kind of thing. And I think we have to keep encouraging ourselves and our catechists to always keep that lens in mind, to create a real faith experience, not a near faith experience. And Francis has made me get re-excited about that. Because we think, you know, well, yeah, but I'm doing this, you know, all these weeks out of the year from September till April or May or however long faith formation lasts. But every single session, our people deserve to get the shivers, don't they? Every single session, we should look at and we should get our catechists and our volunteers to look at. This is an, an opportunity for our people to encounter the living God, Jesus Christ. And I don't know if, if we keep saying that uh, every week to remind ourselves of that. That's important. And, you know, to really evoke all the senses and to really engage um, our communities in that deeper level. And Francis is so good at reminding us, again, especially with younger people, but really with 65-year-olds, too. If it doesn't make sense in my everyday life, I'm just not going to buy what you have to say, as smart as you might be because it has to make sense where the rubber hits the road. And that faith-life connection, which Jesus did so beautifully in his encounters with people. And that's one of the reasons I absolutely believe we have to keep asking, are we doing event-centered learning? There are so many awesome events in the Catholic Church liturgical calendar. And whether, you know, the core of your, of your teaching is event-centered or not, we should still do event-centered learning. And one of the things I love about that is we enter more deeply into the things in the ch Catholic Church that give us those encounters. For example, the Triduum. There's no better place to encounter the Paschal Mystery of Jesus than the Triduum. But if we don't help people to understand the know what, the know how, the know why, then they are going to say, I heard the vigil last two and a half hours, I'm not going to go to that. And I just think that these three questions are just so great for helping people make the faith life connection. The know what is the theology, right? This is what we believe as Catholics. The know how is what disposition do I need? When um, we were being um, in Omaha being trained in the new um, liturgical words and everything, um, Brother William, the Christian brother who is the head of our worship office in Omaha, he was so good at um, you know, teaching because a lot of people were there very resentfully because they didn't think consubstantial would really help people to enter more meaningfully into, into, the, uh, into the worship of our church, the Eucharist. Um, so a lot of people were sitting there kind of grumpy looking. And, and God, God bless you. Brother William said, the train has left the station. Get over it. Let's see what we can do with it. And, and, you know, and he said, we need to focus with our people on the know-how. Because we come as consumers instead of coming as givers. And that's why a lot of people don't get a lot out of Sunday Mass. And so we need to tell people what disposition will help you to get the most out of something. And then the know why. And you know what? Gen Xers, millennials are very pragmatic. They want to know why they should. I wanted to know why I should, but you know, back in my day, it was because you'll go to hell if you don't or because I told you so. And those were the only two answers, so why bother to ask the question? But in today's world, you know, to tell them what will happen to you if you enter fully into the Easter Vigil, that kind of thing. And Pope Francis is really on board that. I just have to share with you, and I'm going to ask you one last question, and then we'll, we'll um, break for John's part of it. Um, I, um, I got this email from somebody who used a session, that we, a family faith festival, 90-minute session on Easter and how Jesus' resurrection changes us. And she wrote that the families loved 
one particular activity. It was Jesus changed me. And each table got a person who was touched by the resurrection. So this table might have had Mary Magdalene. This table might have had Peter. This table might have had our Blessed Mother and so on. They had to go read scripture and then say, how did scripture change this person? And then how does it change us? And she, she had one group of young girls, 9 to 12 years old, who wanted to tweet. And they said, Mary Magdalene would have tweeted, he is risen, hashtag he is risen. And then the, the girls challenged the whole parish to do that. And, the, and, and the, what she said that so intrigued me was that they engaged their religious imaginations. And so I think one of the things that Francis has taught me, and this lady reminded, this DRE reminded me of, is that should be true, right? That we, we capture the religious imagination of people, that we invite them to do that. So the last question I'll have you talk about, and then we'll shift to John uh, before we break for lunch. How do you make sure that you are exercising the religious imaginations of your people through the faith formation that you are doing with them. No matter what age group you work with, talk to each other. John, do you, do you, need, the, do you need the projector? Okay. Should I turn it off during?